In this vlog, we're going to discuss spanning tree. Have a look at this topology. Which switch is the root of this topology and why? Okay, so how is the spanning tree root selected? It's based on the bridge ID, which consists of the priority and MAC address of the switch. And if you wanna get more technical, it's the priority plus extended system ID plus the MAC address. So having a look at the bridge IDs of these switches, let's start with the priorities. So 4097, 4097, 32769, 32769. So the two switches with the lowest priority are switch one and switch two. Now we can't use the priority as a tiebreaker, so we need to look at the MAC addresses of the switches. So first four hex values are 0004, they're the same. Then we have 18D2, and on this side we have 181C. So I would say that this switch is the root because it has the lowest priority and MAC address. So on switch two, show spanning tree. Notice the root switch has a priority of 4097. MAC address is this. That is the priority and MAC address of the local bridge or local switch. And that is the values for switch two. So switch two is the root in this topology. Now in the old days, the switches would have a priority of 4096 as an example. But these days, the extended system ID is used in combination with the priority. So the priority for VLAN one is 4097 on this switch, which is a combination of the priority plus the extended system ID. Have a look at my CCNA course for more details of that, or have a look online for extended system IDs. So this switch is the root of the topology. So here's another question. In the spanning tree calculation, what is determined next? Once you have the root switch of the topology, what is selected next? And the answer is root ports. Every switch in the topology needs to choose a root port, which is its best port to get to the root bridge. So as an example, on switch four, gigabit zero zero is gonna be the root port because that's the best port to use to get to the root switch or root bridge. We can confirm that by typing show spanning tree VLAN and the VLAN number, which is VLAN one in this case, root. As you can see, the root port on the local switch to get to the root bridge is gigabit zero zero. The path cost to get to the root bridge is four. Root ports are determined based on four criteria. Lowest path cost, if that's the same, then it's the lowest neighbor bridge ID. If that's the same, then it's the lowest port priority. If that's the same, then it's the lowest port ID. So which port on switch one will be the root port. Which port do you think will be the root port on switch one? Is it gigabit zero one or gigabit zero zero? The answer is most likely gigabit zero zero. Assuming that we've got default values, typically in the exam, they will let you know if they've changed something. So show spanning tree on switch one shows us that gigabit zero zero is the root port gigabit zero one is an alternate port. We could also use the command once again, show spanning tree VLAN one root. We can see that gigabit zero zero is the root port of switch one. Now the reason why gigabit zero zero is chosen before gigabit zero one is because the priorities of the ports are the same, but notice the port number of gigabit zero zero is one and the port number of gigabit zero one is two. So gigabit zero zero has a lower port number, so that is selected as the root port. So gigabit zero zero will be the root port of switch one. Now what about switch three? Which port is its root port? Path costs are gonna be the same. Let's assume that all these links are gigabit links. Path costs haven't been changed. So we can't use the path cost to determine the best path to the root bridge. We need to use something else, and that's a lowest neighbor bridge ID. So look at switch one's bridge ID, look at switch four's bridge ID. Which one is the lowest? It's gonna be switch one, 
So the root port on switch three is gigabit zero zero. Let's confirm that though. So on switch three, show spanning tree VLAN one root port. Root port is gigabit zero zero. So this is gonna be the root port of switch three. So once we've determined who the root switch is of the topology or root bridge of the topology is, we then select root ports, which we've done now. What gets selected next in the spanning tree calculation? What's the next option? So the next step is to choose designated ports. Designated ports are chosen per segment. So you need to look on every segment and determine which port is the best port to use to get to the root bridge. So this is gonna be the best port to use to get to the root bridge on switch two, I would say. And I would say the same on these ports. Generally, all ports on a root switch are designated ports, except in some cases, as an example, if you loop cables on the root switch. So show spanning tree. Gigabit zero, 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 001 and zero, 02 are designated ports they are forwarding. The switch does have other ports shown in the output here, but the only ones connected in our topology are gigabit 02, 01, and 00. So those are the best ports on this segment to use to get to the root bridge. So on this segment, which port is the designated port? Put your mouse in the middle of this cable and work out, is this a quicker path or is this a quicker path? The path costs of all these links are the same. So this is one and a half links. This is half, one and a half, two and a half. So it's gonna be quicker to go via this port. So this will be the designated port on switch four. To confirm that, show spanning tree on switch four, notice gigabit zero one is the designated port. It's the best port to use to get to the root bridge on this segment. What about this segment? We could go this way, or we could go this way. So the quickest way is gonna be via that port on switch one. Let's confirm that, show spanning tree. Gigabit zero two, is a designated port, it's forwarding. So we've now worked out who the root bridge is, we've worked out the root ports, and we've worked out the designated ports. All other ports in the topology become blocking or discarding ports. So blocking, blocking. Let's prove that. On switch one again, gigabit zero one, is what's called an alternate port, it's blocking. Notice the state is blocking. So this is an alternate port and it's blocking. On switch three, show spanning tree, this is an alternate port and it's blocking. So gigabit zero one is also blocking as an alternate port. So we've successfully determined who the root switch is or root bridge which ports are root ports, which ports are designated ports, and which ports are blocking. Now remember that physically the topology looks as follows, but logically this link is disconnected. It's not sending user traffic at all, and logically this link is disconnected. It's also not sending user traffic. So for PC on switch three, we're sending traffic to a PC on switch four. It would have to traverse this link, this link, and this link to get there. In my CCNA course, I talk about a campus topology and how to optimize a campus topology. So have a look at the course for more information or have a look online for ways to optimize spanning tree. I'll also talk about some of the options in the vlogs. So thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please like it and please subscribe. I wish you all the very best.